Hope everyone has having a good Monday. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. So, well, this is fun. Nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. <laughs> <sighs> How have you been? I think good. I just broke the quarantine. I've been in the room for 19 days. Oh my gosh, yeah, <laughs> I know. It has been an adjustment to say the least, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh okay. my goodness. I know. I think my kids are, uh, you know, they're going a little crazy, but, um, you know, we're hanging in. We're trying to do like our regular stuff and try to keep somewhat of a routine up, but. Yeah. Uh, Normalcy yeah. is good. Too. Yeah. And of course, having to do school with the kiddos, too. Oh, my gosh. I can only imagine that brothers are absolutely going crazy with their kids. <laughs> like, oh, to be you right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. At least, you know, I have a little bit of experience of, um, of homeschooling because I homeschooled my older three kids. And so it hasn't been, like, super foreign for them or for myself to, like, you know, adjust into that. But still... I've been out of it for a really long time <laughs> and to now have to homeschool again. <laughs> I'm like, man, I thought I was over with this. <laughs> but that's all right. I'm just oh, trying to enjoy well, the Hopefully it doesn't like last too much longer. Oh, I know. I know. It just makes me long for summer. I'm just ready now just for summer and to just embrace it and be done with all of this stuff. But mm -hmm. you know, our, our town isn't too horrible with our quarantine yet. I mean, what state are you in? I'm in California. Uh, I'm in Washington. In Washington. Yeah, so Washington, you guys got hit. Are you near Seattle at all? Yeah, I'm about like 20 minutes uh, yeah. north or something of Seattle. Yeah. It's been crazy. Yeah. It's like so you a guys ghost are town. A little bit more intense up there. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Northern California, we're not too bad, but you know. Who knows how it's going to go, but I mean, little by little, we're getting more and more announcements of more cases and different things like that. So, you know, I just hope that they find something, a solution rather than quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sooner. Hey, hey guys, everyone who came in. Good to see you all. I'm glad you guys are all here. And to join us, we're going to read some amazing, amazing words. I know Andy, he, um, we were excited because this was uh, our first like big launch for, um, for Jam Them Down with our team. And so I know some of you guys know me from, uh, you know, Robin Lior's Beautiful Chaos Poetry. And I have my, my live after this one. And uh, this is Z. And um, so for those who aren't familiar, and so we are all here and ready to read your words. But Andy, um, his wife, she heard her back. And so... Um, you know, giving her some rest so they weren't able to pop in today. So we decided to do it and help out and give them a little bit of a break. <laughs> Very flexible. Uh, I have all this time. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We have lots of time. <laughs> so we're like, sure, we can cover for you, Andy. No problem. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I know, Michael, a lot of people thought that, um, that Andy was going to be on here, but it's us. So, mm. oh, but we're still going to read you guys. We're still going to read your work. So, all good. Mm. Well, did you want to start, or do you want me to go ahead and go? Um, I can start if you want. Sure, go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. So I have Silent Lover. Nah, yes. And I'm reading the piece that she wrote for her when our when Lars was ours talked. Oh, okay, nice. I just really love space poems. Yeah, I she do too. Totally tell. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, this when, when Mars was ours. Take me to the space in between you and me where the stars to the, cos the cosmos and the horizons meet, ordering that place that once was ours back to the time when we met on Mars. Take me to the space where, where the asteroids play while they echo through the universe, forgetting about time. Circling the moons, absorbing the beams of light. Take me to the space where the stars are ours, when, when they are no longer tiny grains of sand, being viewed from the land where nebulas glow, beginning to grow, creating a star nursery within the galaxies. 
Take me to the space where, where the moons, Frodo's and Demos, orbit that place, that place where we, where we used to be, and from the rubble we rise to our glory. Take me to the space when, Mar when Mars was ours, where magic exists and all the planets align on, on a simple wish, when the interstellar space between what was and is is all erased. Just take me to that space, that all familiar place, where our destiny is written in the stars. Take me back to when Mars was ours. That is awesome. I do love that piece. I remember reading that piece and it's absolutely beautiful. I like the um, the echo through the universe. Ah, I like uh, so cool. like celestial. Yes. Yeah. I know I have a, I have a couple of pieces where, you know, I like to write about like space or water. I like to also write about like water and, you know, to kind of expand on. I like the whole idea of just like, I don't know, the sirens of the sea and different things like that. But um, yeah. Oh, did you, you read this too, Reaper, recently? Yeah, it was, uh, I really like that. That's a beautiful, beautiful piece. That is awesome. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Yeah. I shall read now. And I don't know if any of the people that I'm going to be reading are even in here yet. I can look and see. Yeah, I just have Andy's list, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. You just have Andy's mm. list. And I just kind of, I came up with a, a little list very quickly yesterday <laughs> when we're like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I have um, Mr. Bo CC, and um, so I have his eight piece here, and it's just called The Flame, and this was back from in February, and I just, I just loved um, just the wordplay on this and just the flow of it. So. The shift is on, and the candle burns. I try to keep it lit with light meditations and mental pictures of scenes far gone and dreams of what if? What if I worked for me? What if I went camping next month? What if I jumped in my car and put my foot on the throttle and tore a black hole through the sun? What if I wasn't working at all? Another order comes in, making the space in between mind and what is at hand lessen and the flame flickers a little more with every ticket as I try to protect it. The flame, they can't take this. They can take anything else, just not this. And I enjoyed that. I, I liked how it was just like all these other normal rhetoric of the everyday, there's all of that, but yet, I don't know, that flame, that little spark that that's within all of us, it's like, that's mine. You know? Yeah, I love that. I love it, I love that so much, you know, because we're all poets just trying to encompass and embrace our own little <laughs> our own little spark, our own little flicker, <laughs> our own little flame. Mm -hmm. so I love that. I love that so much. So and hey everybody who just kind came in. Good to see you guys. Glad you guys are all here. I'm enjoying myself a little cider. A little cider. <laughs> I love beer, but beer does not like me, so too. Oh, I don't like beer. <laughs> you don't like beer? <laughs> I like I like cider, but beer is yeah. just no. No. I <laughs> love beer. I love like the red ales. I like the really dark stuff, but um it doesn't like me, so I don't you know mm -hmm. very often. So ciders are my compromise. It's like right. Need yeah. in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So who do you have next? I have Brett next, the Alan Hart. Nice. And the photograph that he posted with this is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's called Still Point. Aw. Yeah. Love this photograph. It makes me want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to go outside right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is Still Point. The shadow of the falling leaf wanders the sidewalk ahead of me, perhaps knowing where I will go, even though I myself do not. It comes to rest on a patch of grass that seems impossibly green, given the lack of sunlight in recent days, content with this new home. It's a feeling I wish I could know, the comfort within one's own skin. I am the rather restless, searching, 
for an elusive still point within myself. For the song of native thy blades of grass as they catch the wind fills me with a calm only the deepest water will ever truly know. For my footsteps become rhythm, no longer a measure of distance traveled. In all of this, and more, I will know my own heart again, no longer a stranger to myself. The words my heart sings, finally audible after all these years, live with love, live with love live with love. A passing bus disturbs my reverie, carrying away my tranquility. Its taillights trail through twilight and disappear, much like the inner peace I struggle to find. Mm. Wow. Much like the inner peace that I struggle to find. Always good, Brett. You're always amazing. Mm. Your words. It's so introspective and so lovely. I love the um, the elusive um, still point within myself. Oh, mm. that was that was absolutely beautiful. Oh, Brett, you always impress us all the time, <laughs> all the time. It's always good. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Glad you guys are all here. Good to see you all. Oh my goodness. Ah. Oh. All right, well, I have, since uh, she popped in here, I have Woodhead Tracy, and I get to read her, which I'm super, super excited about. And find her piece here. And there's no caption or anything on this one, um, but it is called Beyond the Rainbow. And um, I love the picture that she has on there, a beautiful rainbow. Again, it just <laughs> makes us all wanna go outside. <laughs> Well, we had beautiful weather here today, though. So, how's your weather up there in Washington? I don't know. I haven't gone outside in. Like, you haven't gone outside. <laughs> it's been like two weeks. Oh um, my goodness! Yeah, so I like, the sun is shining, so that's a good sign. That is good. That is. <laughs> I know. I think on Wednesday we're actually supposed to get like eighty degrees here. So, oh man! I'm so excited. I grew <laughs> like, up in Southern Arizona, and I miss the heat so much. Yeah, I, I love miss it. Heat. I love, love, love heat so much. Yeah, even Northern California for me, it still gets too cold up here for me. I would just love to be in warm weather all the time. <laughs> Makes my bones feel good. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is Woodhead Tracy and this is called Beyond the Rainbow. They say beyond the rainbow, there exists better days that each storm may pass ending with a pot of gold. I never saw the other side where the blue birds fly in pairs, where they seem so sweet, like honey for one's ears. But I watched the droplets of rain pour down upon the window frame. They glisten like diamonds, race like athletes, zigzagging down the glass. There's a magic inside them as each pushes dirt away upon its travels cleansing all it's touched, leaving a line behind, a visit that cannot be denied. They say the rainbow be a sign of love from God that all can be renewed. We look upon the array of colors, thinking of the great cleansing upon our earth and how it was supposed to bring a better way. The rain now flows from within me, pouring from my eyes. It no longer glistens as diamonds. This time, no rainbow follows, but a feeling of being held so tight, freedom like magic, a river, a river of tears, and the tranquility brings tranquility for one's soul, the promise fulfilled, a receiving of more than gold. I really enjoyed that. Boy, the detail is just- is so gentle. Yes. It really makes me think of just, you know, how we can get so, um, so lost, you know, I mean, we, I, I love listening to rain and I, I love how she describes just watching, watching the droplets come down, yeah. the road, you know, and how it trails down and just leaving that path there. That the was, imagery is so beautiful. So beautiful. So beautiful. And I, that was my first time ever reading her. So that was really exciting. Was, oh, wow. So, um. Okay. That was a beautiful, beautiful piece. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah, we had a huge, huge rain yesterday, a massive rainstorm. Now we have a little bit of sunshine and then we're supposed to have 80 degrees on Wednesday. So it can't make up its mind. <laughs> it has no idea. <laughs> I guess it's spring, spring in it's, Northern California. That's, what, that's exactly what it's it is. the end time. The weather can do whatever it wants. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I would like to think that maybe the rain could just wash away this virus, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, that would be yeah. brilliant. I know, it would be <laughs> awesome. But I guess we have to wait for summer since it hates hates heat. Oh. But they tell us anyway. I'd like to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> In that case, Arizona should be solid. No have kidding, you ever huh? experienced a summer in Arizona? It's awful. I love it, but it's awful. It's awful. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my parents. Heat. My parents was just us, uh, to Washington, and my mom goes, "Oh man, no more Arizona summers." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> you don't have to wear your, like oven mitts in the car." You're right. <laughs> because you can't touch anything. You can't touch the seatbelt. You can't. Oh my touch gosh. The yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. So hot. You do not want leather in your car. Or black anything like black yeah. cars are so elusive in arizona mm -hmm. you get stuck to those seats you'd be peeling those thighs off <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> the memories like <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i remember um as a kid we lived um we lived like out out in the boonies you know and um but it was great i had a great childhood because we just had meadows and fields to just run and you know be crazy in but the summers were so so hot and you'd go down your slide <laughs> oh <laughs> you'd be like oh shoot i should have tested that first because um that's gonna leave a mark <laughs> so that's when you just take the hose and you put the hose yeah on. water slides <laughs> yeah you make your own water slide that's how we did it <laughs> the redneck way <laughs> oh my goodness all right you are next yes i have wander lost poetry she is great. I got to read her yesterday. Oh my goodness. Did you know that she's only 15? I tell everybody this. Because what? I know. I'm totally impressed with her all the time. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I know. So I'm always like, she's 15. Just so you know. <laughs> How are you 15? I know. I, I feel like she's lived more life than me. <laughs> yeah. The stuff I was writing at 15 was like terrible. I know. I wasn't and even writing. Like, oh my gosh. This is oh. a that's impressive yeah <laughs> it's very impressive she has incredible way with words so she's awesome oh, i can't wait <laughs> to share this one okay this is called alone i begin this fairy tale how i end this fairy tale alone but thy choice you sadistic monster so go on my beloved crack open my huge heart cruelly lacerate the same beating muscle that adored you and behold the red sand sifting out and slipping through your fingers that's what years of isolation from affection and affirmation will do the lack of love but the abundance of lust to rot out the liquid of ardor that once clotted and flowed freely through my body for chance to dream of love seen only at dusk you may materialize by my desolate side. I gaze upon forgotten memories and torn photographs, and eyes of hazel turn glazed and glassy. Our days of slow dancing in the dark morphed into vengeful fighting in the light, fighting insults and sting stinging tears. Articulate the true colors underneath your love. The reds of wrath and resentment are not becoming of you, love. I deserve to be treated like a masterpiece. Not like that rag doll you stood on, demeaned and ridiculed. All the paper dolls in the world would be set aflame by your inferno of anguish and anger. I understand that now, my dearest. So you are a lost soul craving attention and praise, and you circle others in your enchantingly horrid world of romance. You see, just because you're force, you force your suffering on others, I get their burden does not mean I have to take your bullshit, honey. I had the strength to abandon you, like you threatened to do to me. But the ironic part is that I actually had the balls to leave your ass. So yes, I began this fairy tale how I ended this fairy tale, alone. Though it was all by choice, you disgusting, satanic, 
figure of a man. Wow. Shit, that is strong. I know. I just want to pick a <laughs> brain and be like, where did you even, what did you experience at 15 oh. to come up with that? It makes my heart hurt. Like, you shouldn't have to be writing about things like this. <laughs> that is powerful. <laughs> so powerful. A masterpiece of paper dolls in the world. Oh my gosh. The paper dolls in the world to be set of flame. <sighs> Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Every time, every time I hear her, she just blows me away. And still, and I'm gonna, man, I don't think she has a replay of her live. She went live and I had no idea and I, I wanted want to see it, but I don't think oh, it's available anymore. But So next time. She said yeah. Saturdays. Saturdays at nine my time, and I think she said twelve Eastern Standard Time. So the next one, I'm catching it because I need to see that girl. <laughs> Stop making me blush. Never. <laughs> I, I I just will gush over you forever. <laughs> it's so good. So so good. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, next one I have again another one I've never read before. And I just started following, and hopefully I say it all correctly, but it's a Tootie Tots one. So, oh, yeah. So I'm going to read theirs. I have to zoom in on it, though, because it's not in the captions. But um, the caption does state, when me and my beardly half moved um, into our new house for the first few nights, I would dream about this woman pacing in our room. And I'd wake up because of the feeling of someone tapping on my forehead. And so she wrote this about that experience. So I was completely <laughs> fascinated. Like as soon as I like read the caption, I'm like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> totally into it. <laughs> so yeah, so she just moved into a house and she would have dreams about this woman coming and uh, facing their room and being tapped on the forehead awake. I know this used to be yours. The walls, the floors, the windows, the way that the wind blows down the chimney and spills it. This is our toe. When I'm trying to speak for me, Am I frozen? Was Sorry, I frozen? My, no, my connection was cutting out. Okay, I didn't know if I froze too, so I didn't know if it froze in between the poem oh. or not. I wasn't sure. Okay. No, no, no. All right, so I will continue. I will continue. <laughs> but yeah, so she says, anger at my eyes closing where yours used to dress. I know this used to be yours in the doors and the wardrobes and cupboards, those little nooks and corners where cobwebs and dust cluttered together all your stuff where mine now sits, inhabiting, like it had always lived in that thought, but that's not the truth. Before me, there was you, and this was all yours. And sometimes I think that your fingerprint to my forehead is a, just a kind of reminder that while you left, you still linger, and we are cohabitating strangers. Me, a tenant, and you, the landlord, of all this land that used to be yours. And I just thought that was great. Wow. The backstory of it, you know, that she had this feeling, this energy, and uh, she would dream about her and feel like woken up, and the fact that she wrote a piece about it, I, I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. really cool to think about. Yeah. Kind of like haunting in a way. Yeah. To think that, oh, someone else had a life in these walls before. Yeah. So true. So true. I know. Really beautifully written. Absolutely. And I and I love stories of like that because um, it is so true, you know, especially when you move into a home or you go and visit a place. I mean, people were there before you, you know, and it's just um, incredible. And I like how it was just more of like a, like a respect and an acknowledgement of the presence 
versus something yeah. that felt um, abnormal or eerie or you know disturbing that it yeah. was this um, a type of respect and understanding and I thought of the was, line I the tenant and you the landlord yes yeah absolutely. I love that they are cohabitating that was so yeah love that now it's Tootie Tots one so she that was very very new to me that was a new account I don't think I've ever heard of her before, and yeah. I will go check her out yeah. when it's all over. Okay, so the next one is you! Me! <laughs> I know, I was thinking about that, so I picked one, uh, one of yours out too, so I'm going to read you too. <laughs> oh, thanks! <laughs> okay, so this is a piece called The Seduction of the Sea. Mm -hmm. Which I don't think I've read this one before, so this mm -hmm. is fun. Okay. I can feel the rhythm that methodically dates that causes the effortless muscle memory of my emotions. Sorry, I. You're good. Also, just a heads up, I had to like Google the pronunciation of some of these words. I know. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I'm really bad at that. Everyone's just like, really? Can you please stop doing this? I'm like. Long. Okay. <laughs> so just so no worries. Up. No worries at all. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna start over. Okay. Um, the seduction of the sea. I can feel the rhythm that methodically. Sorry. Beats yeah. that causes the effortless muscle memory of my motions unison. Pumping the crimson into each ventricle and vein. That alive is a feeling, and alive is what I do not feel. I stare into the deep blue and can see its many layers from the cliff edge, the chaotic tips of white foaming and lathering, shaping their pillowy disguise against rock and coral. Beyond that is the aqua of solicited whistles and taunts, swirling in, a, in hypnotic beauty, drawing in my icy stillness to lean and sway, for all I wish it to submerge into its res- lascivious taunt and to feel the crispness against my goose pimpled arms how i wish to feel its sting my cerebral scruples have lost their precept as my eyes blacken and loosen within my primordial primor casing knowing that beyond the enticing beauty of the stirring sea there is darkness there is calm there is quiet and there is where my soul will find its peace I think this time I will allow it to swallow me whole, allow its encapsulating white cap jaws to ingurgitate my fragile bones, for the echoes of your love have gone faint, and I have been ripped apart. How can I survive when you hold my soul? How can I exist when each beat was spoken for? This isn't my world. I don't belong here. I wake each day to the rhetoric of meaningless meaning. I go to sleep each night, wading into my sorrows, my dreams mysterious and filled with rayless light. I stand on the ledge, see each absence of their soul coverings, my small toes dangle, curving over, gripping the cool earth, firmly rooted the balance questionable, pushing the damp soil between each appendage. The wind catches my blouse, causing it to tighten around my ribcage. I inhale and close my eyes. The scent of the ocean salty spray climbs up the cliff's rough terrain. My long tendrils take flight with each gust, and so I outstretch my arms. I, the mast, hesitant for this new journey, alone and afraid. Yet my worst fear has been cultivated, jagged edges exposed, duty has waned. I am simply a housing for the biological anatomies to resume their rightful duties, regardless of my disdain. I am vapid and the darkness that I have feared for so long is ever consuming and I am enswathed in, within the blanket of my despair, and I am ready for the shell of me to become a shell of the sea. The, the desire to take the leap to flex my small stasis digits into the dirt and rock and propel me from my counter those dance into the depths of the blue that calls to my soul. The only call I now hear, for I am now without you. The silence, deafening, 
a tradition I wish to be loosened from. So here I stand, just me. No, no you, no us, no we to ever be, and, and with each crash, with the waves, a tear falls in symbiotic unison. I feel one with the waters, its chaotic impact, hard and violent, slapping against mineral and granite, its anarchy and full vocal declaration. It's calling me, it wants me, the intoxication of its need, soothing to my aching and shattered soul. Our goodbye still resonates in my mind. I can't stifle the what ifs, the what to, the, the what's to never be, the negativity flooding an endless possibility, sirens of the sea calling to me, singing their song of my demise and how they hypnotize. The pain has become unbearable. I cannot reside in an existence without you by my side. A world where you don't want me is a world I can no longer endure. My dearest love, you have unleashed my organ. Once rouge and full of life, now black and shriveled. The same dating vitality that you once held captive now aimlessly wanders, wanders within Hades' hole. Pledging my heart in my last gesture of a fond farewell, its desire to escape and be free from its rib caging of protection, feeling its rise and fall as it screams to the waters below in exalted anticipation. The devilish deceit of the ceaseless, self-deprecating cacophony of falsification, with my unworthiness, your absence, now the justification, proving these atro atrocities true, factual, finite, my value now determined, my sins judged, you, my jury, and my sentence have been given, your, abandon your abandonment, my guillotine, another crash pulled me from my chanera, reminding me of my duty, my obligation to finish the task that had began, and so I saw. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. And that was just basically <laughs> so much of the time where, you know, when my when my depression like envelops me and um I do I do love the sea and sometimes I just feel feel like a shell, you know, and feel very um very in empty and I, I I use the reference of feeling of like black, you know, of just like just there being just darkness and not being able to see beyond and um but yet there's still so much beauty around us and it's even in those darkest times I can still see that beauty and especially within water water like elements water fire you know just uh, just any of those and um it's just so that's kind of I don't know kind of like an homage to the beauty of the world but yet even though my darkness can sometimes envelop me no I kind of get that um I've always associated uh, feelings with water. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, perhaps it's the being a cancer and all emotional. Um, mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. I feel like there is a deeper meaning, and like, it just makes sense for emotions to be tied to the to the water. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's 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 hypnotic to me. It just pulls me in, but yet at the same time, it's something so absolutely beautiful, but it's so powerful, but can also give someone like so much peace. You know, I mean, when, when I'm at the ocean or near water, I mean, there, it's just like soothing to my soul. It's absolutely soothing. It's calming. And, um, and I think that that's kind of what my balance was of what I was trying to achieve that, um, yeah. you know, here I'm standing. I think you did it very well. Oh, it's thank you. So nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now my turn, my turn. And I have Karita. I have Mira, Mira. And it's so funny because I always say, meh, Mira, Mira, meh. I, I <laughs> really still, I don't know how the, the pronunciation that she prefers it to be, but that's just how I coin it. <laughs> I'm just like, it's Mira, Mira, meh. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and she sent this one to me, actually. Um, it was just yesterday that she actually sent this to me. And um, she, in her captions, wrote, uh, Bear heart, the wind is my mother, taught me something important. A knife 
might take a life, but it doesn't touch the soul. Illnesses and virus might be the death, but it doesn't end the existence of life. We always continue in another form. She said, the words are quite simple and mundane, but the feelings I have towards these soul sisters isn't. And so she sent that and, um, you know, and just admiration and just to give little shout outs to those in the community that have been supportive and loving to her. And it's called a prayer for balanced peace. Even though a piece of dirt or a patch of sand seems so plain and simple, but if your eyes seek another path, the complicated words fail to describe the endless beauty. Look, beloved soul, from the smaller to the greater, you will see the folded truth from the flag you know. Every fiber of it represent a complete bloodline as every country creates the lines and history of Earth just as each planet stitched together the cosmos. Life and death is just one part of something bigger as smaller molecules together gives visions of fields, beaches, forests, oceans, and mountains. You have a place in everything as it remembers you. We only change from one beginning to another as raindrops falling into lakes and rivers towards the sea and still we continue always further and beyond. That is just so beautiful. I just love mm -hmm. how the, the, the beauty and positivity of just like there's there's just so much more to us than just our, our, our physical presence. You know, that yeah. even even if time here of our of our physical self ends, what we leave behind and what we have before us, whether it be if you believe spiritually or, you know, and um, you know, in another life or whatever it may be. Um, but we still leave behind our memory. We still leave behind our love. We still leave behind pieces of us. And so we can live forever in essence. So I yeah, think. that's very true. Yeah. So I love it. And cool. thank you, Joe. I <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Joe. That you like my piece. <laughs> yes. Yeah, very good. All right. So, you are next. My last one is Brandon White Music and Poetry. Mm. And this is called Walking Down Ninth Street in the Rain. Mm. This often... one kind of broke my heart a little bit, but okay. whatever. <laughs> so I will be prepared then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The pavement beneath my feet is wet and shiny. The occasional drop of cold rain on the back of my neck is a shock to the system, causing me to grit my teeth. I know plenty about cold, rainy February days. I know plenty about death. I know I'm dreading the 27th, and at the same time, I'm ready. I know I want to be free of it. I know how a chest can rise and fall, how what you think is the last threat is really only two irregular threats before the final one. I know that I feel told to my childhood home because I want to steal a rock from a flower bed. I know that people that throughout this corner building and made it their home have these gas lanterns that burn all night and I wonder what that must be like to flush money. I know my thoughts are all over the place. I know I loved you. I know I love you. Not loved, love. Wow. Mm. I don't know the story behind this, but it just resonates with me for some reason. Yeah. I like, I like the, you know, you, you go through this journey with him, and at the end, he says, "I know I loved you," and then he corrects himself and says not loved but I love you like it's still yeah. the feelings are still very very present and um, that's there's something very very um, powerful powerful in the recognition of that and just you can feel the powerful just in the feeling itself and oh the, the line where he talks about the two regular breaths yeah right and it's, that is just oh man mm. so good so good 
All righty. So I am next, and I am going to read you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to read you. Uh, oh, thanks for clearing that up, Brett. Man. I <laughs> oh, wait, oh, it's fast? Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, that definitely, yeah. that pulls it all together. Absolutely. Wow, that was heartbreaking. Oh, the loss. I I do not have the loss of a loss of a parent. I have the loss of a you know um, of an in law, but not you know my own you know mother or father. And I don't. That would be that will be that when that day comes. That will be a very difficult thing to endure for sure. So, heart goes out to him. All right. So this is you. This is Z. This is writing poems mm -hmm. in the dark. And I love this. It's called this one of yours is called Noise. <laughs> so I love this one. Thanks. Says I don't want to talk. I'm all talked out. Talking at this point is just noise. Noise is a cacophonic crackling of static at a pitch I can almost hear. I can almost hear it. Meaning I might as well hear it, but I can't. It is a collision of words that I cannot pry apart for long enough to recognize that they might have meaning. Voices wrapped around each other in a harmonious exchange or rather start circling each other, waiting for their turn to pounce. I hear the noise, but I do not want to engage with it. Engaging with the noise means inviting conversations into my home that I do not want to have. It requires the active movement of my mouth and strained vocal cords, toxic positivity I am currently lacking, and a mundane topic meant to bore me to tears. Some people use their voices simply to fill the void, thinking they're giving life to the silence. The silence was never a dead thing to begin with. So much will grow and blossom in the quietness if you let it. Wounds scab out, scab over, and scar and heal. My philodendron, sorry, I said that wrong. Philodendron sprouted a new leaf when no one was asking anything of it other than to be. My memories are patching themselves back up in the stillness, and please do not ask me to talk. I am all talked out. Talking at this point is just noise, and I can never hear the static anyway. So I know that in reading that, what, how I received it, because there are just um, certain points in time for me <laughs> and where I go in my headspace, where um, it's hard for me to just look past, uh, you mentioned the word mundane, like sometimes I just, um, a little bit more exhausting to me than, than I prefer it to be. And sometimes those simple silences are perfectly fine. <laughs> mm. I, I, I don't mind the, the silences. Um, sometimes I find that we learn and grow and le uh, learn so much of each other if we are comfortable in a silence. If you can be comfortable in a silence, I feel like that is that's someone that you should embrace and enjoy being around because they're allowing you to be so much of yourself. And, yeah. Um, so in reading that, I just I, I could relate to so much as far as like the, the energy into certain circumstances or situations to where it's just like, do we really have to do this? Do we have to go through this? <laughs> so you it so beautiful. Thank uh, you. Oh well, thank you. So I'd be curious as to know your um, the spur of uh, what instigated you wanting to um, express. I am hard of hearing slash deaf. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot, like, the noise is just static. Uh, I have hearing aids, but I don't wear them anymore. Okay. Uh, because I learned that early on as a kid, um, it just amplified the sound. Mm -hmm. And so I don't wear my hearing aids and I am, I guess, at a deficit because of that, some might think. Okay. But it just means that I have to work twice as hard to hear people and understand people. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I don't want to pay attention, yeah, uh, noise is just static. Um, but also taking that and 
it's really difficult for me to talk sometimes mm-hmm. um not like talk like obviously i can talk yeah um but like talk about like my feelings and what's going on mm-hmm. because i guess the other part of it is that uh there's a whole generation of kids who grew up not comfortable talking about their feelings Mm -hmm. and I am in that generation Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it's just really difficult to express those kind of things and when other people ask you how you are doing and they don't really want to know they're just asking because it's nice to ask um like it's just it's what we've been taught to do yeah you inquire but are you really wanting are you inquiring because you want to know or are you inquiring because you're just trying to get the social appropriateness to the situation yeah so it's that point it's just noise well yeah well thank you for sharing that is i i love i love hearing people's perspectives of what you know what inspires them to write pieces and stuff so writing for you must be um i mean i i'm sure all of us writing for all of us Mm -hmm. is a huge outlet but you know you get to really express and um you know just vent and put all your feelings onto paper which is absolutely incredible thank god that we can thank god that we can if we can't verbally express things or if we have no desire to verbally express them that we get to write them down and um and still be able to be heard and have our voice yeah it in just another form so i even find that if i'm more able to write because sometimes i just get stuck mm-hmm. um i can still draw oh awesome. and the creation i think in general just is I'm not writing, then I'm drawing. If I'm not drawing, I'm probably doing something crafty like crocheting. Yeah. Um, but like, you just, there's all this energy and it has to go somewhere, you know? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I know I can't draw anything. I can draw stick figures and even those aren't very good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have music. So I play piano and so I can sit oh, and that's cool. um, if I'm blocked or I don't have anything, I, I have another way, and you know, to be able to put those emotions, um, you know, through through piano, and and I have, you know, my angry pieces that I'll sit down and like <laughs> and play the piano, or I have my emotional pieces, and so to be able to express myself in that form really, really helps, especially when I find that the words aren't coming, you know, and I need to. I'm feeling and I'm feeling and I'm feeling and I don't know where how to expel it or where to put that energy and um, you know writer's block sucks but it happens but at least I have the outlet of music and so I, I definitely yeah. realize that that's great or, yeah but I, I crochet too I love crocheting <laughs> so. yeah I crochet blankets <laughs> oh my gosh there are another blankets that like my brothers and sisters are tossing out babies left and right and I'm like Y'all are having babies too fast when you yeah. make blankets work. <laughs> well, and for me, my, my, my mom's amazing with crocheting and knitting, and she'll do, like, all the patterns and all the designs. Are you good like that? Can you no. Do okay, me either. I have, like, the one stitch. I just go back and yeah. forth and back and forth. <laughs> That's my... Figuring out patterns is so hard. I'm like, I did not sign up to do math in this. Right. I know. <laughs> now, wait, I have to change this needle? I have to do that? <laughs> Oh, can I keep this one? <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it can get uh, can definitely get pretty pretty over the top. All right, we have ten minutes left, and I have one more piece to read, and this is by Anxious Unicorn. And I like that username. So yeah, Anxious dot Unicorn, and this one says, let's see, on the caption says, "I am not. Leave me here or throw me out of this bead." Yes. It some full stops deal with it <laughs> so not super long but uh, I liked what this one had to say I know you won't understand but there is a method to my madness my radical self-sabotaging psyche incompatible with this world and at the bottom of the pit with a shovel in my hands I will only dig myself deeper believe me I absolve you as I condemn myself. I set the torches up as I dissolve. I let you consume me as I starve. I let you pull me apart as I scream in silence. But believe me, I am not a writer, nor I am the poet. I am a new pair of eyes for you to see through. I am caterpillar crawling over your cerebrum. Leave me there or throw me out, and at the bottom of the pit, 
I will only dig deeper into my darkness, loaded with words and lost in a search for my mangled carcass that I call my psyche. And I love that. I felt like that just really encompassed like us as poets, you know, as, as writers, that it's like so often I, I look at myself and be like, I'm not a poet. I'm not a writer, you know, and, and mm-hmm. so many people in the community are like, stop, don't say that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> own it, claim it. And I'm like, I don't know if I can just yet. But I, I love how it says, you know, I going to share with you through a set of, you know, my eyes, you know, you get to see through a new pair of eyes. And, and I, I love that. I, I love that because it's just, that's all we're trying to do. We're just trying to share a piece of us that is maybe someone can relate to maybe someone can understand and so we're not claiming to be writers we're not claiming to be poets we're just simply trying to share a piece of us and yeah pretend. i like that perspective yeah. yeah definitely so i love that mm-hmm. so you had said though that you so you've always written you've always been interested and always enjoyed writing yeah since like the second grade when i was like yeah i want to be a poet and everyone's like you can't be you can't make money that way go be a firefighter and it looks fine (laughs) can't be the president of the united states because it wasn't born here but sure (laughs) and see for me i'd be like absolutely be a poet absolutely 100 (laughs) percent. that is a place where you can certainly utilize your voice oh yeah. yeah definitely so that is awesome. I feel like it has made me a better student too. Yeah. Like, um, I just finished up my last quarter to get my associate's degree. Um, hey, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I feel like it's helped in writing, like, academic papers too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's dice out this thorn six yeah. page paper on something. <laughs> right, definitely. <laughs> let's make this a little bit more exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I've always liked writing, but I just never took it seriously, um, you know, until recently. And, um, but, you know, like I said, I had homeschooled my kids, and so I was so much in like mom, like mom world. And even before that, I got married at 16. And so I was married very, very young, and then that didn't last very long. But from there, I moved on to, you know, next marriage and then kids and all that stuff. And so I just never really embraced anything for myself. And um, so it took me a long time to figure out what it was that would be good for me. You know, what... What What makes you happy? Yeah, exactly. And um, surprisingly, I would never have thought that this would have been the route, you know, that that I would have taken, that I would have just... um, enjoyed and felt like wow I found myself there it is I found my voice I found mm-hmm. me and um, you know something just to make me feel more confident and more whole and um, so it was very very unexpected but thankful for the journey for sure um, now here I am back in homeschool world and so I'm not <laughs> writing as much as I, I would like to but it uh... definitely, um, allows me to at least be appreciative of you know of knowing knowing where my journey is going <laughs> rather yeah. than not having that question anymore so that's definitely that's great that you found this yeah and this outlet for you oh, right that's huge just to have something for me for my for my own self and um, yeah you know, not your kids not exactly. anyone else's and it was hard too because i always looked at everything being um well that's selfish you know i don't need to do um but at the same time i want my kids to see that it is okay to do something for yourself to you know to make you feel human <laughs> and make you feel yeah. <laughs> as an individual and so mm-hmm. uh you know i had to try change my mindset on that of just like listen don't you want your children to look at you and say like oh okay mom does have something for herself she is she's more than just mom you know and uh so in yeah. my perspective it did help me embrace it a little bit more so that was good that's good yeah and now i've met all this amazing community and now have met you which is great and this has been super fun so i've enjoyed yeah it has been um and thank you guys for everyone who came in and and joined us and everything so yeah this last first live stream with someone else yeah (laughs) (laughs) i don't like doing lives by myself at all 
I, it gives me like anxiety. I'm always just like, anybody, anybody want to pop in? Anyone want to come yeah. and with me? I don't want to be yeah. this by myself. So this was great that, uh, you know, that now we're on Andy's team and uh, I'm sure we'll be doing a little bit more of this together, which is going to be super fun and exciting. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And now I guess we'll shut it all down and I'm going to go pop over to my other, my page so that I can do my live for tonight. And, yeah, uh, have a good live. Yes, I will. And uh, thank you. Hold tight with your quarantine. Oh, thank <laughs> Get you. outside as soon as you can, whenever that, that may be coming your way, but uh, hopefully sooner <laughs> than later. So, all oh, right, Z. Well, it's good to meet you and thank you everyone. And, yes, uh, thank you. If you still have time, everybody, come over and pop over and say hi to me on my other one. But if not, just enjoy the rest of your Monday. Okay.